another hand praise. Thank God for the hand of the Spirit in this house today. Thank God for the victory. You can give us a victory tonight and give us a victory tonight. Don't you have to go on the way. Hallelujah. You don't never doubt God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said he brought down high places. Yes. Hallelujah. For their sin. You harm the least of these. Yeah. Do not throw unto God. Hallelujah. So I thank God that we're in the right church at the right time. Hallelujah. And church, just keep being encouraged. Yes. And keep believing in the word of God. And God give you a testimony. Yeah. Don't sit down on your testimony. Share it. Hallelujah. We let everybody know God is still in charge of this situation. Hallelujah. I'm reminded Jude wrote it was needful for me to write unto you yes. that you earnestly contend for the faith once delivered. Yes. For there are certain men who crept in unawares. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Ungodly men yes. took the truth of God and turned into lasciviousness. Yes. Foolish behavior and foolish lies. Yes. So I'm saying to those who are yet mocking the word of God, Lord. true light is still here. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And we honor the Lord Jesus Christ, the one God eternal. Yes. Lord, who made the worlds according to the scripture. Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning, God made the heavens and the earth. Amen. John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 10, in reference to Jesus. Yes. He was in the world. He was in the world. Yes. And the world was made by him. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The Jehovah God of the Old Testament yeah. is the same Jesus Christ of the New Testament. <laughs> Right. Called Malachi 2 and 10 say, Have we not all one Father? Have not one God Amen. created us all? Yes. Where did this Trinity foolishness come from? Amen. The same place that ungodly men came from. Yes. Who changed the truth of God and made it into a lie. The same demon spirits yes. that are able to get on TV every day in the week look like to me. Yeah. And that costs a whole lot of money. But they got a whole lot of money. Yes. That's why they're millionaires. Yes. Because they got a whole lot of food. Yes. Send them that money. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. Church, if you only knew what is taking place today, where the word of God is being mocked and the true church of God is being made to be blasphemed yes. without any fear. Glory. They got a judge in Atlanta and they allowed her to speak okay. at a church after she got exposed mm -hmm. for breaking up another man's marriage. Right. Yep. Sleeping with another man mm -hmm. who's married to another woman. Yes. Glory. Loved it so much she raised him up mm -hmm. to be a prosecutor of felony cases when he ain't never had no idea what a felony was. That's right. <laughs> it was an insurance. Yes. Uh, Lawyer, Glory. he go to you when you get in a car accident. Mm -hmm. That's a whole lot of difference between a lawyer who's trying to keep you from doing 20 years. Yes, but she picked him because she had a romantic relationship with him yes. and didn't care two cents about the man's wife and children. Yes. Mm -hmm. Even though the children may have been teenagers in college, it don't make no difference. You had a family. And what about your family? All right. Come on now. Where's your shame? Mm -hmm. But when she got in trouble, the first place she went to was a church. Mm -hmm. But it was a false church. Uh -huh. They let her speak from the rostrum. Yeah. Now she had an affair with a married man, but they let her speak from the rostrum. Mm -hmm. What kind of church is it? Right. Anybody who can hear my voice over YouTube, and you still going to that hypocrite church, Shame on you. Amen. You ain't got no better sense to go to a church where the pastor's so weak that he allowed for a hypocrite and a prostitute Amen. to speak before his congregation. Amen. Shame on you. Amen. And shame on the congregation more so. Amen. And I wish I could see that Sunday. I wish I had x-rays eyes. Right, 
I would look and see next Sunday if there's anybody in the pews. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And if you're there, why are you there? Amen. And you're going to say amen when that devil called on the name of Jesus. You're going to say amen. Yeah. When you don't know nothing about Jesus. Right. Self-evident. Yeah. You're going to let a woman come up and speak mm -hmm. and try to defend herself where? In the church. Yeah. Why? Because she knows that's where the most of the fools are. Yes, yeah, hallelujah. Except in holiness. Yeah. And all them churches out there, you, you do the same thing. Yeah. Preacher mess up, you make make reservation for him. Mm -hmm. And we think about we raising his salary. Preacher don't get no salary. Amen. He uses what God gives to the church Amen. wisely Amen. and not for self-grandizement. Right. Ain't for no Mercedes. Amen. Ain't for no brand new wardrobe. Amen. Yeah, you got to have shoes. You don't want to get on his knees like they used to in the old days. Yeah. And when they get on their knees, they say, oh, he got holes in his shoes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, praise God. Because right. he been laboring in the vineyard. Yeah. So I'm saying, church, yeah, if you enter YouTube, if you in Acts 238 church, you better listen to me. Yes. Someone yes. made mention that I said I was only prophet. That's I'm the only prophet to the Acts 238 church That's right. in this dispensation of time. Yes. And I'm not ashamed to say it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I can read you tell. Yes. I can see you going to tell the right one. But the right one may be who I am. Yes. I ain't went to no cemetery school. Amen. Hallelujah. I got my information from God. Amen. And studying to prove myself. Yes. Getting books and reading and trying to make a discernment yes. which book is right and which one is wrong so I can critique right. and call the false prophet who he is Amen. and point out where he is. Amen. So I want to say, brothers and sisters, if you recognize that prostitute who calls herself a attorney yep. voted by people, she wasn't voted by God in the Holiness Church. Hallelujah. Skirt all the way up the knees. She ain't got no business wearing no short skirt nowhere. Uh -huh. Amen. Hallelujah. That's right, brother. And she ain't no uh, nothing glamorous to look at. That's right, brother. <laughs> She would look decent if she had a veil on her head right. and a full neat dress Amen. and a face clean. Amen. But since she tries to hide who she is, God will always expose yes. the real who she is. Yes. Yes. So I'm saying to everybody who looks at her and they get a little sympathy, don't get no sympathy for that devil. Amen. Amen. That devil broke up a family yes. and brag about it yep. in so many words mm -hmm. and then try to lie her way out. If y'all watched the events yesterday. Oh, yeah. oh she's a clever liar. Hmm. But don't you know when God get ready to snatch that cover? <laughs> right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, I imagine after the hearing the other day, I imagine she go home and kind of hide her face. Mm -hmm. How do you go around your people? Come on. If you're an attorney, you sending people to jail. Yeah. Ain't you supposed to have some kind of character about you? Right, you send the people to jail for less than what you did. All right, Father. Yes, hallelujah. Right, right. Amen. You send the person to jail because he stole a loaf of bread. And he was hungry. All right. Yes. Well, you ain't supposed to steal. That's true. But the Bible says you ain't supposed to commit adultery either. That's right. Well, hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. But they're catching up with him. Uh-huh. Yes. that pimp. Yep. Yes. He's an attorney. You're a pimp, if you hear me. Yes. Anytime you take woman, a money from a woman, you're a pimp. Amen. Amen. Prophet says so. Amen. 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 And you can lie, twist, and turn. But you know, and she know. Yep. Paying you all kind of money. Hmm. And you ain't never tried a felony case in your life. Glory. And you're going to try the President of the United States. Yes. Glory. Oh. Oh. Praise God from glory. Mm -hmm. And you all have to be careful. Going to them hypocrite churches Amen. after you've been forewarned. A woman who sleeps with another man and it's not your husband, yes. you are a whore. Yes. Yes. W-H-O-R-E. 
Yeah. If I didn't see it plain enough. Yeah. Sleep with a man and especially yes. he got another wife. Uh -huh. And children. Yeah. What do you think the wife think of you and your children think of you? Yeah. And what do your own children think of you? Yeah. What's the normal? Everybody does it. No, everybody don't do it. Yeah. Holy yeah. folks don't do it. The reason why it's done so much because you got a preacher who allow a whore to stand in the pulpit and testify what a great person she is and how somebody trying to hurt her and exploit her. Amen. You ain't got no excuse Amen. for being the devil. Amen. And especially when you don't come to a holiness church and get saved. You went to the right church, all right? Amen. I dare you. Wish, I wish you had to come to true life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hurry up and set you down. First of all, you can't come in with you. Don't come in here with that skirt that short Amen. and high heel shoes. Amen. What do you got high heel shoes for? All right. come on now. Your legs ain't all that glamorous. All right. I don't care if you wear that skirt up to your navel. You ain't got nothing to look at. Now that's your ordinary. Yeah, a man gonna glance because he's a man. Amen. He's supposed to glance if you show it. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't care how much Holy Ghost he got. You come in there half undressed, and yeah, the man gonna look. Because yeah. he's a man. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. But after he said, Jesus, thank you. Oh, amen. For delivering me from all unrighteousness. Amen. Amen. Oh, I'm telling the truth here. Amen. Lord. Amen. Let's make up our mind tonight. Yeah. When we watch TV, we know how to discern the right from the wrong. Yeah. And the good from the evil. Yeah. And be able to point it out. And then stand flat footed on the word of God. The world's in a turmoil because you don't have no preaching left. But the prophet in the Lord's house. And maybe if you scattered more. But I say to the extra 38 church, why haven't you contacted me? You see my number. And you see you got a small gathering. Let's come together under one leader. God never had one property each dispensation of time Amen. to rule his church Amen. that he gave authority to. Yes. And who God gave the authority to, you can't change that. Amen. Because maybe you don't like what I say. Amen. You ought to love what I say. Amen. And I'm saying it's trying to save your soul. Amen. And deliver you from ungodly men, for all men have not the faith. That's, right. That's scripture. That's so I'm saying, brothers and sisters, Step back and take another look yes. after you see true light. Amen. And I want to say to that preacher in Philadelphia, Amen. you constantly talk about women preachers. Glory. Have you read the whole text? Yes. Glory. Did not the text say that a woman be silent in the church? Yes. yes. But I see some of your church singing, All right. mm. clapping their hands. And say amen every time you say Jesus. Right. But silence means without sound. Amen. Yes. Nowhere in that scripture text to say except they sang in the choir. Except they say amen. Except they say hallelujah. Oh, glory. It said be silent in the church. Yes. Now what did it mean? Well I'm going to try to help you if I can. Right, it's not talking about those who God has chosen and set apart to a work in the vineyard. Just like when John wrote to the elect lady. Mm -hmm. Why did he say elect lady? Yeah. Now get your dictionary. Mm -hmm. Look up elect. It means above someone else who's not elected. Yeah. Right. Someone obviously who set apart from someone who's not set apart. Yeah. That's why he said elect lady. Or yeah. a lady with a higher calling. Amen. A higher anointing. Yes. A higher order. Elect lady. I'm glad to see that your children are still following the faith. Now right. you know he ain't talking about no little children. Amen. Because if you read it, the rest of John's epistles, he always directs his uh, teaching to little children. Yeah. Now he talking about little children. He's talking about a church congregation yeah. that he yeah. calls little children. Yeah. Or children. Yeah. Read it. First epistle of John, first epistle, a second epistle of John, read it. Yeah. All through the day, he says children. Yes. When he says children, obey their parents. He's not talking about adult parents Amen. and small children. 
He's talking about leaders in the church. Yes. Be obedient. Because it's automatic. Children are going to be obedient to the father and mother. That's automatic. Yes. But how many people in the church are going to obey the leadership of the church? Is this not third Sunday? One, two, three, four. Uh oh. Ain't nobody say amen. amen. Church got silent on me. Uh -oh. I don't feel ashamed if you ain't working. You're working in the vineyard. Yeah. Don't worry about that. But if you got a job, third Sunday means third Sunday. Yeah. To leadership, to those who have been raised up to be preachers or evangelists. Amen. Now I'm not talking about regular lay people. I've explained that over and over again. Yes. But if you've been anointed to preach the word of God and your leader said third Sunday, bring that half in. Ain't you know I mean? you just do. Bring that half in. Amen. Now I said, if you're not working, this does not apply to you. So don't get too sensitive. Glory. I'm talking about when people get a paycheck every Friday. Amen. Third Sunday, half it's to the church. Yes. And you think that's too much, and you discuss it with God. All right, brother. <laughs> if you want to. Amen. If you can get a prayer through. Amen. Amen. Look. Uh -oh. Disobedience is worse than witchcraft. Amen. The Bible said. So I'm saying, brothers and sisters, I'm thankful for those who are obedient in the church. Amen. And I say again to you, you are handpicked and you are special. You are not here by accident. Amen. God willed you to be here Amen. and made reservations for you not to be in a graveyard and not to be in jail but to be in a true life church tonight. Amen. Don't take it lightly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've told you too many times you drive around town long enough you don't see it in the home. Now, if you're in a home, ain't there because they ain't making no money. Amen. And the only way they make money, somebody got to leave here. That's right, yes. brother. As we all will one day. Amen. But that thing ain't nothing but just to make nice words of somebody who used to be with us. That's all it's for. Because we got a better home. Yes. I mean, with Abraham, a hand not made with hands, yes. but eternal in the heavens. Right. Hallelujah. Yeah. But to get there, you got to go through some trying ground. Amen. You got to go through some tests and trials. Now we have a panel tonight. I think it's going to be a wonderful panel. Because I'm looking forward to having a wonderful time listening to the panel. Uh, I set this up because we're going to have some evangelists speaking tonight. Amen. So those of you who don't believe in coming preachers, go back to your false church and turn this off. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, I turned them off. Yeah. And, and Sunday, be, make sure you're in that false church. And listen to that devil preach. Amen. With thus saith Satan. Not with thus saith the Lord. I oh, mean, I'm fooling you there. And then take a close look at him. And then switch your... You two, if you can, back to true light. Amen. And listen to a voice from heaven. Amen. Now on the panel tonight, I think it's Evangelist Rogers, Evangelist Shiloh, and Evangelist Smith. All right. Amen. will be on the panel tonight. And, uh, I think we have comments from Senor Amen. and Evangelist Wagner. And uh, some, uh, I'm going to have to look at my notes, but you govern yourselves accordingly in that way. <laughs> Jesus said, God, they are free. Yeah. You shall know them. Yeah. Oh, all you got to do is sit back and watch. You know who's saved. Yeah. Oh, I'm saved. I know. Praise God. I'm so saved. Amen. Y'all remember the story. I'm going to turn over to the panel in a minute. Preach. Sister, you should testify how much you love the Lord. I'm taking the work with me. Take him to the store with me. Take him shopping with me. Take him home with me. Take him in the bed with me. One night a house caught on fire. 
my two brothers looked at me and said, well, wait, maybe we better go inside and snatch you out. And pretty soon his sister came out. He said, oh, praise God. And somebody, a man, ran out the back door. The other man looked, the other man said, whoa, there go Jesus. <laughs> Listen, it's good to testify. It's good to praise God. But amen, back up your testimony by your life story. All right, our panel, our, our panel, brother, in that order. Amen. Amen. Right. I think I'll ask uh, uh, Evangelist Shiloh to read uh, the context of the panel tonight. Amen. And we're going to ask the panel to govern yourself with two minutes each and a round robin, and that we might bring clearly out the word of truth to the viewing audience. Amen. Bless you. Praise the Lord, saints. Heavenly Lord, Mr. Jesus Christ, the head of our lives, our lives, our prophet, the church walker, and let them walk there. As well as you, I thank God for this panel tonight. We have some very important, um, a very important focus to go over. So I want to start with our main text in Second Peter chapter two, verse twenty. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning. And I want to go to our reading text in 1 Samuel 23, 16 through 18. It reads, And Jonathan, Saul's son, arose and went to David into the wood and strengthened his hand in God. And he said unto him, Fear not, for the hand of Saul, my father, shall not find thee, and thou shalt be king over Israel, and I shall be next unto thee, and that also Saul, my father, knoweth. And they too made a covenant before the Lord, and David abode in the wood, and Jonathan went to his house. And our focus is... Jonathan refused to suffer with David and went back to his father who was rejected by God. The importance of staying in the church when you are delivered from the world. So we have some very important um, topics to discuss. I want to thank God for this panel. I want to thank God for, um, to my left, Evangelist Rogers, and to my right, we have Evangelist Smith, and we're going to start with Evangelist Rogers. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Giving all glory, honor, and praises to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, truly the head of my life, double yeah. infinite honors to God's truth, in times, apostle and prophet, prophet H. Walker, and to the blessed memory and legacy of First Select Lady Mother Walker, giving honors to whom honors are due, uh, greeting all the household of faith with love and admiration in Jesus' name, as well as the YouTube viewers and those viewing by any other means. Uh, we greet you in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Right. Truly, it's a blessing to be again in God's true remnant, Acts 238 Church, Apostle Peter, established on the day of Pentecost under God's true and only righteous prophet of God, Prophet H. Walker, who was sent, let's not make any mistake, to God's remnant Acts 238 church, which we are here at True Light Pentecost Church. Any others out there that we're not aware of, and we have been searching and have not found any others that are in holiness that are of the remnant Acts 238 church. But if you want to belong to the remnant Acts 238 church, make your way to True Light Pentecost Church right here in Spartanburg, South Carolina. Uh, we're not hiding anywhere. We're right here out in the open. Make your way so that you too can be saved the Bible way and be up under God's true and only prophet of God, Prophet H. Walker. I thank and praise God for the text that um, have been brought out, you know, from the from God to the prophet to us so that we can impart these blessed words of wisdom to you so that you too can make your decision with, with full knowledge, not watered down, not uh, we don't handle the word of God deceitfully. And we know that in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, it's speaking about if you've been saved already, you've been washed, blood washed, saved from the elements of the world, the wickedness of the world, the deceitfulness of the world, the sins of the world, you cannot go back to that sin. Why in the world would you get cleaned up and, and purified just to go back out and wallow in the mud like the sow uh, that goes back to wallowing in the mud like the dog that goes back to his vomit. You know, my goodness, why in the world would you want to go back to filth after you've been clean? Who puts on their Sunday best and then goes out and gets uh, in, in a mud puddle and start dancing around in a mud puddle? It's craziness. When you think about it spiritually, it's lunacy to jeopardize your soul like that. That's like telling God, you know, I, I reject you. I reject 
uh, the salvation that you brought to me through the death on the cross, that you suffered, hallelujah, and before that, being handled by man, being spit upon, being hit on, buffeted, thorn of crowns put on his head. You know, the Bible says that his visage was so marred beyond any other. They could hardly recognize the God of glory who took so many beatings for our sake. Hallelujah. Do you think that he will accept you into heaven after you uh, throw that back in his face? Oh my, no, it's not going to happen. You know, this is our, we're espoused to Jesus. This is our soon coming king. This is the husband that the bride is waiting on. We are the bride of Christ. So if we are espoused to Jesus, would your natural husband allow you, or your natural wife, if you want to look at it that way, if you're a man, would that person allow you to marry them and then go uh, start abusing them and disrespecting them, and do you think that they're still going to love you? No, they're going to be looking for divorce proceedings, hallelujah. We don't want to be divorced from Jesus. If you get divorced from Jesus, that means you're going straight to the lake of fire because the devil is ever waiting for those who have escaped him to come back, and he's ever trying to get you to come back. And if we look at 1 Samuel uh, in 23, chapter 23, verses 16 through 18, it speaks about Jonathan, as was read already. Jonathan made a covenant with David, who was next in line to be king over God's people. But he was in a rough way. He was in a way where he was having to live in the wilderness and go through a lot of suffering. But what happened? David went back to suffering. Jonathan only thought about his comfort zone and went back to his father's house, who hated David. You cannot have a fellowship. I don't care if it's a father, mother, sister, brother, whoever it is. You cannot have a fellowship with the devil that hates God, that hates those of God, and still think you're going to escape and be all right. No. When destruction came, Jonathan was destroyed right along with Saul because he was in the wrong place at the wrong time when he could have been with David safe and secure in the arms of the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, Saints. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in God's house. Amen. Where the truth is heard and spoken and lived. I want to give honor to Jesus Christ in my, uh, my life. I'm Prophet Walker, ladies, Lady Mother Walker, the wonderful member of Mother Smith, the elders, ministers, deacons, brothers, sisters, evangelists, all the daughters, everyone in the household of faith. I thank God for the privilege to speak God's word because God's word is redeeming. It transforms you. It takes you from the flesh to the spirit. And this is a warning to people. Anybody who has heard the truth, you can't leave because times get a little tough because it's, it's, it's already tough for you right now in the world i don't think you get too much tougher so anything you go through in the holiness church is 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 more than worth it because god said you know we are not above our master jesus suffered for us he died on the cross so we think we're above jesus no i don't think so so we have, we have to be a follower of christ Amen. see a lot, a lot of people don't understand what christian really is supposed to mean one who follows christ so many people are lying to themselves. They have de deceived their hearts. And it's really sad to live a lie, you know. And when you think it's really the truth, I mean, you're going too far. I do believe the Bible refers to you as being a reprobate because what you think is a lie, now you make it the truth. Uh, and, and, and you can't get to heaven when you are wrapped up in a lie because the devil is the follower of lies. And God is the truth. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you've got to get to the truth to get to some more truth, you got to accept the truth about who you are. That's what I love about the Bible. Because if you, you know, people say, oh, I'm trying to find myself and all this stuff. Well, go read the Bible to tell you all, all about who you are. Amen. You're born into sin. You sinned. You need to stop being a sinner. You need to repent. You need to get baptized in Jesus' name. You need to come and get taught on the prophet how to live right and get back restored back to God. That's my whole life story right there. So you, you lost come find yourself in the Bible because I'm telling you, you will find your way. Now, because the Bible also says that if we suffer with him, we'll reign with him. Amen. If you deny him, he denied you. You're not going to heaven. Amen. you got a cross to carry too. Even the greatest apostle, Paul, said that I keep under my body that he wouldn't be rejected and be a castaway. He was the greatest apostle. He still walked on his tiptoes. You understand? You have to walk very carefully, yeah. especially for leaders. You know how careful you got to walk this walk? Do you understand? You, you mess with people's souls, not just their livelihood. You're talking about soul eternity. Amen. So serious. People need to be more sober and stop being so playful all the time, like Prophet was bringing about. Bringing about. 
Because uh, the soul, you know, if we break out often by Hebrews uh, but 10, 26, for if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there are made no more sacrifice for sins. I don't care if you heard one thing from one person of this saint that you're supposed to wear your veil or, you know, you're supposed to pay your tithes. You, can't, you know, anything you heard from this gospel, you, that's the truth. You turn your back on that, God can't give you any more truth. But I know somebody somewhere told you something about this Bible gospel, but it's up to you to keep on searching for the rest so you get, you know, get, you know, the fullness of God. See, with Jonathan, most people just come to church like, like Burger King to have it my way. I want it my way. All I want is the blessings. And, and after they see their blessings, they run out, they want to run out the door. But God never said that. He said, come to you all that are heavy laden, I will give you rest Amen. for your soul. I don't know if people think they're trying to get saved and you could have to escape life's problems. Glory. God said you're born and man is born into trouble. Yes. Stop trying to find an easy way out because there is no easy way out. Yes. It's like a quicksand. Every time the more you try to find an easy way out, you go deeper and deeper and deeper into sin. More and more and so deeper into sin. More and more. It's ever learning, never come to Keep trying to go to this person, that person. Jumping from false church to false church, false preacher to false preacher. Why don't you just humble yourself and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Please save me. I need the truth. Without the truth, you can't make it. You can't be saved. With Jonathan, he loved, you know, being with the person who's going to be the next king. And you're going to take You know, he liked that. You know, that pomp and circumstance. I'm this. I know the person's going to be next in line. But he ain't like the rules. He ain't like discipline. He ain't like to have to sacrifice. He ain't have to, you know, be humble. But all that go together. It's a whole package deal. You can't just take the good and, and not the bad. You know, the world have a saying, you got to take the bitter with the sweet. Amen. You're going to take it all, or you're going to take nothing of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, I want to thank God for the work that we've heard so far. And Evangelist Smith brought out about Hebrews, and, you know, that's a scripture that we go to often, about how you cannot turn back once you have been brought into the knowledge of the truth. And it's very important because that's something that Jonathan did. He had David there. He, he made that covenant with David, but he chose to go back home, and David stayed in the woods. But Jonathan was in the right place, and a lot of people right now, they're not in the right place, but we've seen people come into the church and then leave in the church. They were in the right place, but then they turned away from God. Why would you do that when you have what it takes to get to heaven? You have the keys to get to heaven, you have the keys to see God's face in peace, why would you turn away from that? If God shows you a miracle, why would you turn your back on God like that? And really quickly, I want to go to, he I want to, go to Hebrews as well, but I want to go to chapter 11 um, and starting with verse 24. By faith, Moses, when he came to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. If Jonathan would have stayed in those woods with David, he would have been able to suffer with God along with David instead of you know going back home and being with his father because like the evangelist brought out he wanted something else and a lot of people they want something else other than to suffer with God but you gotta want God more you gotta want God's um you know his plan of salvation more you gotta want to walk this journey a lot more than it than to be with your friends to be with your family to be drinking to be smoking whatever it is but you gotta do whatever it takes to get to heaven and that's what we're trying to impart to you don't be like Jonathan don't turn your back on God once God has delivered you from the world don't turn your back on him because you have everything that you need you have the keys to heaven why would you give that away you know it, it's free why would you give it away why would you want to give something away free it doesn't really cost anything in the sense of finances because people care so much about money and like the Bible says money is the rule of all evil but you gotta give up your so you got to be willing to deny yourself. And that's something that Jonathan did not want to do. He did not want to deny himself. He wanted what he had back at home. But we see what David did. David stayed in those woods. So you got to be more like David. And I want to pass it over to Evangelist Rogers. Yeah. Hallelujah. And you know, I'd, I'd like to, uh, uh, piggybacking off of what, uh, the evangelists have brought out, hallelujah, about not sacrificing those that want to slip slide into heaven, those that listen to the false preacher, that uh, all they want to do is dig deep into your pockets. They're inspirational speakers. They're not sent by God. They're sent by Satan. Did not Satan tempt Jesus in the flesh, God in the flesh, took him to the pinnacle of this of the synagogue the pinnacle of the of the temple so that's a very very high place you know oh my goodness so the devil has that ability the devil has uh the ability to offer uh, all the riches of the world in a moment he showed all the riches of all the kingdoms and to jesus oh, how stupid is he but to jesus offering him the riches of the world if Jesus would bow down to him and worship him what does that remind you of hallelujah jesus rebuked him hallelujah and is the false preacher rebuking the devil when the devil is offering them riches? No, and you can tell because Creflo Dollar has a jet. Creflo Dollar, I think he has two jets now, and he has rich 
opulent cars, just like T.D. Jakes, Joyce Myers. Oh, did God offer them that? No, because Jesus did not die on the cross for us to have mansions, alligator shoes, yachts, and, and, and jets in the world. He died for us to be saved, for us to come out of darkness into God's marvelous light. Hallelujah. Those false preachers out there, they, including the one in, in, in Philadelphia, the bald-headed man, made bald by his own doing, hallelujah, against the word of God. Why doesn't he take a Nazarite vow like the prophet of God to be closer to Jesus? Jesus had the vow of a Nazarite. Jesus never shaved his head. If you want to be a true follower of Christ, a Christian, why in the world are you shaving your head? Hallelujah. So, you know, my goodness, you have these false preachers prophets out here doing things against the word of God that they're listening to Satan telling them Satan is offering them all of these opulences all of this money and all these rich accounts for their children and their children's children it's ridiculous while you're catching a bus while you're living in a shanty while you're living from paycheck to paycheck why don't they give like Jesus gave Jesus fed 5,000 and 3,000 with loaves and fishes he fed the people why are these false preachers not feeding the people of God hallelujah good wholesome truth that will get them saved if we turn to uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 16, it says, Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Where's the doctrine found? Right here in the Bible. Amen. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. So if you're not continuing in the doctrine, if you're not in the doctrine at all, the doctrine is what saves you. That's the only way that you can see God's face in peace. And the only way you're going to have the doctrine rightly divided for you is under the prophet of God. You got to come here to True Light Pentecost Church. Humble yourself. Repent of those sins. Leave. Run fast away from those false preachers. And come on into holiness. You know, and you too will be able to be saved the Bible way and see God's face in peace. So I thank and praise God for the prophet of God. I thank and praise God for all that he's giving us. Hallelujah. For all that he's blessing us with the truth of God's word and exampling it for us. Hallelujah. And it says in chapter 6, uh, 1 Timothy, and I'll turn it over, chapter 6, verse 3, If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds, and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness, from such withdraw thyself. But godliness with contentment is great gain. Pray my strength in the Lord. Thank you, praise God, for the word of the Lord and the shallow. Amen. And it's all talking about uh, being serious, about if you want to turn to Christ. Or do you really want to turn to Christ, or are you just doing it because somebody told you? Or, you know, are you doing it really for yourself? Because if you do it for yourself, then, then you will be lasting and you will stay here. Some people come because somebody else is here. You never do that. You make your own decision. You know, don't be influenced either way because the Bible says very clearly, when you make a vow to the Lord, you better keep it. Amen. You know, you come and say you're going to come and be baptized in Jesus' name, live for Christ. I want, I want to go to a scripture on that a little bit here. Uh, you know, making promises that you don't keep. But let me tell you, one person that makes promises and keeps all the promises is Jesus. Everything in this Bible he said, it's going to come to pass. He said, you add it to the word, I'll ask you to place it in this book. You take anything out of this book, you take your name out of the book of life. He said, let not fornication once be named among his people. How many times he said no, and they that love to have his soul. See, I know we bring that scripture a lot about Romans, about the sodomites and lesbians. But if you go back up, he named a whole list of sins. Yes. About how they love to have it so. It's all that stuff. All you going to help all of it. All sin is sin. If it's sin, it's sin. Willful sin is willful sin. Living a lifestyle of sin is not going to get you to heaven. Amen. You, you, you have to crucify the fresh flesh on a daily basis. But I want to go to Second Timothy, uh, Second Peter chapter 2. Because it's like they come here. You think, oh, <clears throat> you know, they're trying to do better and be better. It's a, but the Bible reads it's like a dog turning back to his vomit again. Yes. Going back, and the Bible says how the, the de demons enter you seven times worse than, we, we, than when you were just in the world before you knew the truth. But I want to read verse 21 and 22, uh, 2 Peter. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they had known it to turn from the holy commandments delivered unto them. But it happened to them according to the true proverb, the dog 
But the unbeliever heathen is turned to his own vomit again, and the soul that was washed to a wall in, in the mire. Right. So we don't want to be, you know, compared to a sow, which is like a pig, okay. going back to the old sinful life of smoking, drinking, cursing. Weren't you tired of that? Is that why you even tried to come to church in the first place? Right. I mean, I mean, I thought you were tired of it. Sometimes I don't understand people, but I, I know God understands them because as what Bob says, you know, man look at the outward appearance, but God look at the heart. God know every secret thing you're thinking, doing what you're going to think tomorrow, next year, down the road. So I don't see how they think they can kind of outsmart God. How, how, how can you do that? Amen. You're just damaging your own soul. You're not going to trick God. You're not going to fool the Holy Ghost. Even if you come in, you try to trick your prophet. You still ain't going. You still ain't going to trick God. God don't want to get this. Going to tell you going. He said, uh, "Go down thy good and faithful servant, or depart from me that worked iniquity." So don't you try to play games with prophet anyway. You need to stop doing that. Amen. Coming here, using, and then really not really trying to be here. Don't you see that God knew that before you even stepped in the door? Glory. Please don't do that Amen. again. To anyone that hears this, Amen. you're playing a very dangerous game. Amen. A game which you will lose. Glory to God. Okay. And, and he and, and Hosea, I want to go to Hosea 14 and 4. See, people don't understand how God is. He's so loving. He's so merciful. He just wish, please just repent. He wants to restore you to himself. Just please repent. Because he, he said, if you really repent, he don't care about your sins. He'll take them as far as the east is from the west. But he just wants you to be sincere about it. He won't help you take one step to help you with it. You try your best. You keep on trying. Just try your best every day and give it your all. Then one day, wow, I got to break through from that. Wow, next day, I got, I mean, two months later, I got to break through from that. Because keep, yeah. he keep filling you more with his Holy Ghost power. I'm going to get power over that. I'm going to get power over that. Because you keep trying. And trying don't mean trying means I'm doing all I can. And I mean doing, I'm not thinking about doing what I can, I'm doing it. Yeah. Some people talk so much, they do so little, you know. <laughs> like that idiom, you know, all the bark and no um, bite, you know, they just, they talk, 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 no action. Amen. But with Jesus, the Holy Spirit, you got to take action. Amen. Say, pay your tithe, pay your tithe. Say, Thursday come out. You want to see it on Friday, you want to see it on Sunday. Amen. Now, one excuse. He said that he would take care of your every need. So don't say, oh, Lord, I'm going to pay this bill. I'm going to pay my gas. I'm going to get some food. He said, I'll take care of your every need. Amen. The first need is for you to be obedient to him and pay the money. Give the money because you are a robber of God. You're stealing from God. Yes. <laughs> you understand? People, are, this Bible is so serious, you know. But Hosea 14 and 4, it, it said, I will heal their backsliding. I will love them freely. Don't you want to be free in the spirit of the Holy Ghost power? Free from, from drugs. Free from alcohol. Free from those people in the world who say they love you. They don't love you. They don't even love themselves because they ain't loving God. If you ain't loving God, you don't know how to love yourself. Yeah. Don't you want to be free from that? And always have to be angry. You got to curse every single other word. You act like you don't even know the English vocabulary. Right. All you know is curse words. That's it. Yeah. It's, it's a new language called curse words. Or, you know, I get so sick and tired of this. I all go, oh, it hurts my ears. I say, no, you can cover my ears. My children, no. I don't like that. I got to have peace. The older I get, closer I get to God, I need peace going through my ears. I don't let anything try to come through my ears. I'm even very selective on the gospel music I listen to. Amen. Because if it doesn't have the same proper rhythm and the lyrics, I don't want to hear it. If that a boogie book, worldly rhythm, I don't listen to that. Amen. That's what you do playing the game with Jesus, halfway being in the church, halfway being in the world. I can't stand all that. No compromise in Jesus. There's no compromise. He said, I will love them freely, for my anger is turned away from them, right? Right now, God is angry for every single person that has not come in and repented and baptized in Jesus' name. And, then, and he's angry right now. He's very angry with you. Bible said wrath. Okay, wrath. He said, I'm not coming back all humble and meek. I'm coming back with blood dripping in my, you know, blood. You understand? He let his own creation torture him. <laughs> and you take it lightly. Mm. Put thorns in his head. He wanted some water. Couldn't get that. Mm. And you know... Put, put it all through his wrist and hang it up there Lord. for I don't know how many hours Lord. for you. Hmm. you. Take it so lightly. Like you can't just just give up a little something. Goodness, what is it? What is it? What's so hard about giving up sin? It's not hard at all. It's because you still love the devil. <laughs> so you haven't made your mind to love Christ. That's the problem. Yeah. But, uh, but I love the Lord. I pray everybody want to love the Lord because after a while it's going to be, be done away with and you can go on for peace. Living in glory, like Prophet said, I'm coming to visit you on my cloud. You come to visit me on my cloud. Yeah. All your tears be washed away. No more crying, no more dying, no more sickness, no more yeah. none of it. It's gonna all be forgotten. Yeah. You know, it's gonna be forgotten. So just go through what you gotta go through, so you can go to heaven. 
Amen. 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 I thank God for everything that has transpired so far. I thank God for the evangelist words. And, you know, we are talking about suffering. We are talking about choosing God over the past. We're talking about choosing God over the devil. And, you know, when you come into church and once you have been converted, once you have heard the word of God, you have to transform your mind. You can't you can't be a part of the devil anymore. And so we go to the scripture a lot, but I want to go to Romans chapter 12 and I want to focus on verse two and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind yeah. that you may prove what is, what is that good and acceptable yeah. and perfect will of God. So, you know, one thing that Jonathan did not do, he did not transform his mind. He wanted to be at home with his father, but he wanted to also have a covenant with David and you can't have it both ways. You're either going to choose God or you're going to choose the devil. And we talk about this a lot. You know, we go to Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 15, a lot about choosing good or evil. And it's obvious what Jonathan chose and what David chose. And it's also important that you make sure that you're not around people who may influence you to go the wrong way. And that's something that David chose to be in the woods. He chose to stay with God. And Jonathan had the right influence around him, but he didn't want it bad enough. But David obviously wanted it bad enough because that's why he stayed in the woods. He wanted God badly enough, but Jonathan wanted the devil more. And that's something that people don't realize is that do you want God more or do you want the devil more? People will call on God when they're in a the time of trouble, but when they're not in the time of trouble, they focus on the devil. They put their earrings in, they wear pants, they do this, they do that. Yeah. But why are you calling on God when you got earrings in your ear? Why are you calling on God when you got a, your face painted? Why are you calling on God when you got a skirt all the way up to your thighs? Why are you calling on God? God is not going to hear your prayer. You can't play with God like that. You can't expect God to hear your prayer and you was acting like a devil yesterday. No, God's not going to hear a prayer unless you're for real and you're sincere. And that's something about Jonathan. He wasn't for real and he wasn't sincere. He wanted to have it both ways. He wanted to have his cake and eat it too because he wanted to have a covenant with David and he still wants to go back home so he can be a prince. No, you can't act like that. You can't be like that because God is not going to take you that way. God's going to take you one way. It's God's way. You can't have God's way and have the devil way. God is to play like that. You either going to suffer with God or you going to suffer with the devil. And I promise you, if you suffer with the devil, you're going to be suffering for a really long time. And I want to turn it over to Avenge Rogers. Hallelujah. On fire. Hallelujah. Who was it that said women can't preach hallelujah that's holy ghost filled women called by god with the spirit of god in them the spirit of jesus christ that spirit of truth to preach the word of god there is no more male nor female hallelujah we are all one in christ jesus you can't look at the outward appearance and say oh she's a female she can't preach oh the bible says she can't preach but god said and in the last days, he'll pour out his spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Philadelphia, can you hear us? Hallelujah. Can you hear this message? Hallelujah. And let me uh, bring it uh, a little stronger to you. In Judges chapter 4, the Old Testament, hallelujah. And a woman is not supposed to usurp authority over a man. Hmm. Not any woman, but if that woman is called by God to do that work, then you have to respect and obey what that vessel that anointed vessel woman is bringing to you from god chapter 4 verse 4 in judges and it says and deborah deborah is that a woman's name i yes. believe so a prophetess huh yes a prophetess and wife of lapidoth yes she judged Israel at that time, and she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in Mount Ephraim, and the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. What? Came up to her for judgment. God called a woman. Philadelphia, can you read Judges chapter 4, verses 4 through 5? Read it, or you have a reader that reads for you. Have them read it to you, hallelujah, so that you can know that women do preach and bring what thus saith the Lord to the people that God has chosen because they have chosen God to follow him and obey him, hallelujah. He will bring the word to his people so that his people can learn what God wants them to do. How can you know anything if you don't learn, if you're not taught? And how can you be taught except you're taught by the preacher of God? And how can that preacher be of God except he be sent by God? These false preachers out here, as was brought out so many before, so many times before by, uh, by senior elder, hallelujah, he says they went, but they weren't sent. Hallelujah, the prophet of God has said and taught, they go, but they're not going in the name of the Lord. They're going on their own accord, They're, they've dreamed a dream. They have a thought of the lust of their own hearts. They are trying to so-called preach a word from God, but they're deceiving uh, the people. They're 
handling the word of God deceitfully and only using the word as an instrument to gain money, riches, filthy lucre, hallelujah. The love of money is the root of all evil. They have turned away from God because of filthy lucre. Yeah. And that's not of God. Jesus didn't come collecting money, did he? You're supposed to be Christ-like. Why are you not giving instead of receiving? Didn't Jesus say it's more blessed to give than to receive? Yeah. So T.D. Jakes open up that bank account and start giving that money, those millions, probably billions, to the congregation. Those people who are following you, feeding you every day, hallelujah, their hard-earned money, give back to them. You too, Joyce Myers, want to be a little nine-year-old boy, hallelujah, you might as well go on ahead instead of buying more high heel shoes, more lipstick and makeup, which is against the will and word of God. Amen. Read 1 Timothy 2 and 9, 1 Peter 3 and 3. Go ahead and read those passages and find out that you are in area. You are in error of the word of God. You can't wear makeup and jewelry and pants and cut your hair like a little boy and think that you are of God or accepted of God. No matter how many inspirational messages you bring out, you're not of God. So go on ahead and open up your bank account as well and give that money to those people who are following after you, who are destitute, who are living from paycheck to paycheck. Joe Osteen, oh, let's not forget about you. You have one of the richest ministries hallelujah in the world uh, over there in texas you know black gold texas tea hallelujah go ahead and give that money that you have to the people of god how feed the people of god jesus told peter feed my sheep if you love me you all say that you love god in your so-called inspirational messages go on and give to god's people in yeah. fact turn all that money over to prophet h walker so that he can build more churches so that he can be on tv hallelujah on the radio hallelujah so that he too can be preaching the word of god but not deceitfully so that he can save a soul because that's what he's preaching for to save a lost soul not for the collection basket hallelujah he's preaching for god he has his accountability to God, not to man. You all have an accountability to who? Satan. That's who your accountability is to. That's who you're serving. That's who you're trying to get next to. That's who you're trying to uh, receive your so-called blessings from. God blesses those who are righteous. God blesses those who love him. He does not bless sinful people. He does not bless those who are living in sin and holding hands with Satan. So you have to understand who God blesses and what a blessing really is. It's not a blessing to be rich in the world. That is temporal. It's going to burn away with fervent heat. What are you going to do? What is your answer going to be when God comes to you at judgment and says, what's your excuse? What have you done in your body? What have you done in the world what have you done knowing the truth of God what have you done to build up the church what have you done to save a soul what have you done to give to prophet H Walker who is truly God's prophet to God's remnant Acts 238 church anybody else that's out there that's not a member of the remnant Acts 238 church you're not in God's church. God only has one. One church. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism. And if you're not in the remnant Acts 238 church, True Life Pentecost church, here in Spartanburg, South Carolina, you are not of God. You are in a false way, and God will not be coming back for you, lest ye repent. Amen. 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 We're in a time right now where there's so much going on, turmoil, conflict everywhere. Don't people take notice of the signs of the time? He's coming back much faster than people think. And they're still trying to make plans for like five, ten years from now. This earth might not even be here that long. But Jesus is coming and back very, very soon. And not to take advantage of God. Uh, oh, you know, everybody sins. Everybody do this. No, everybody doesn't. Because we at you like we don't sin. We don't live a lifestyle of sin. And there are people... They, can't, they believe that you can do it. And you can with the Holy Ghost. No, you can't do it without Jesus. So you need the Holy Ghost. So that's why some people don't have enough teaching and understanding. Yeah, you might be saying that from the natural standpoint. Well, I can't do it. You, you're right. You can't by yourself and your flesh. But with Jesus, you can. All, with God, all things are possible. And I want to go to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. In, in verse 10, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, 
in the which the heavens and earth should, the heavens shall pass away with great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works then are, shall be burned up. And you know what they talk about now, dropping bombs on each other. Wouldn't that count as fire? So you see, that's why we have to pay attention to what the word of God says. Seeing that, that all these things shall be dissolved, what matter of persons ought ye to be? What? It tells us in all, all holy conversation. You have to be holy in every area of your life. And godliness, looking for the haste to the coming of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and let it shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we according to his promise look for a new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent, be very careful, that you may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless, and account that the long suffering of the Lord is salvation, even as our beloved uh, Brother Paul, according to the wisdom given unto him that written unto you. It's very clear in Revelation that he's coming back quickly and soon. Revelation 22, and he tells us here, you know, in verse 12, I want to read there. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according to his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, the first and the last. And I want to just drop down to verse 20. He which testified these things said, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 And I thank God for all the words that have transpired so far. And really quickly, I just want to go to the book of Matthew, um, chapter 16. And I want to go to verse 24. Then Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And once you've come into church, once you have been baptized, once you have repented of your sins, you have to be willing to deny yourself. And, you know, we talked about why Jonathan didn't stay in the woods and suffer with David because he was not willing to deny himself. He didn't want God enough. And that's something that we are trying to impart to you. If you want God enough, you are going to suffer with God. That's the bottom line. There is no other explanation to it. If you want God enough, if you want to be saved enough, if you want to go to heaven badly enough, if you want to see God's face and peace badly enough, I guarantee you're going to suffer with God. You're not going to let anything sway you. You're not going to let anything take you out of the church. What we're trying to tell you today is stay in the church. If you're watching us on YouTube and you can't be here physically, keep watching Prophet on YouTube because it is the closest you will ever get to the truth, the true knowledge. We are teaching you the truth. No other person out there, no other devils out there is going to teach you what Prophet has taught you, what our panels have taught you. This is the true light. This is the truth. That's the only place that you can get it. Okay? This is the only way you will get to heaven is if you follow true life because we are teaching you the Bible. You see us evangelists up here. We have read the Bible this entire time. We are not making things up. We are not, you know, just coming up with stuff. We're reading from King James Version Bible, the closest translation to the actual Hebrew Bible. We're not just sitting here making stuff up. We're teaching you what we have been taught because we have been taught by the man of God and we want to impart to you what it takes to be saved. And pray my shukunu. You Honor and a loving uh, mother Walker and um, and for the summer I'll call Edda Brooks. Amen. Amen. Let's get a uh, pat of a hand. Amen. Word of heaven, get a Holy Ghost again for me this day and night. Amen. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, give them all praise, honor, and glory. Jesus Christ, what you got, make of all things. And thank you, praise God for our Lord. God, thank you for doubling all honors like the mother Walker, loving yeah. woman. All the things God and you like family. Let's get a panel on hand for a powerful word from heaven. Again, great job. Let the Holy Ghost lead them. Amen. And talking about, um, you know, once you delivered and saved and sanctified, you can't go back into the world. You know, Amen. believe the Bible mentions about um, if if you go back to the world, the latter end is worse than the beginning. It'd be better that you have not known the ways of righteousness then to know them then go right on back you know you're a fool in other yeah. words you know a saved person is not no fool and thank god for the yeah. lesson focus talking about jonathan jonathan refused to suffer with david and that's the thing about holiness like um the evangelist brought out you come into holiness you're gonna suffer you Amen. know you get saved you're gonna suffer you might as well make up your mind. <laughs> Bible makes it about like the evangelist brought out about picking up your cross. Your cross is a responsibility, and cross it, it signifies a suffering. You know, just like Jesus picked up his cross, we have to pick up our cross also. What the Bible says, Christ suffered in the flesh. On yourself likewise. You know, 
God suffered, you're going to suffer too. You know, we ain't no better than God. And the Bible mentions about how they in, in the Old Testament, the prophets suffered, the apostles suffered, you know, and, and we ain't no different, you know. So you have to, well, what the apostles say, I rejoice in my sufferings. I'm glad about it. But here's the thing. You know, if the uh, if 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 you suffering for God, then you know you must be doing something right. But if you living a, a, a glorious life and yeah. having your cake and eating too, yeah. that way bother you, you, need, you must not be doing something right. Amen. You know, and that's what people fail to realize. You know, when you and then uh, it mentions about that about um, uh, and I'm gonna read that. And, and he went back to his father's house, who was rejected by God. And the importance of staying in the church, you know, and that's the thing, you know, you come into holiness, you have to stay in the holiness. I believe the Bible mentions about separation. You, you know what? Fellowship. If you say when a person is not saved, what y'all have in common? You can not talk about the weather and sports so much, you know. Eventually, the tie got to hit the road. Eventually, you know, it's got to come to a conclusion, you know. And I thank God. I'm going to sit down. But I had came across a, a sister and her daughters, and um, I don't know if it was this the older girl was her daughter or not, but they had on the long dresses, you Amen. know. And I can, and, um, and I say, I see y'all um, all got on dresses, and I say y'all must be uh, religious. She said, Yeah, we Hebrew Israelites, <laughs> mm. and so are you. I say, No, I'm a Christian. I follow the I follow Christ, you know. Amen. But, you know, I thank God that I was able, to, you know, to witness to them, you know. And yeah. I let them know, like the Bible says, there's neither male nor female, neither, neither Jew nor Greek, for we are one in Christ Jesus. God is, what the Bible mentions about God, so love the whole wide world. It's not no particular race that can be saved, this race can't be saved. I say, what's the difference? <laughs> you say they persecute, persecuted you, and you persecute them? What's the difference? There ain't no difference between y'all. The Bible mentions about it must be a difference between that which is clean and unclean, you know. Yes. But they heard this, the, the, the seed was planted, and like the Bible say, God give the increase. So Amen. I thank God for this great pattern. They did a fabulous job, let the Lord lead them. That's what the same person do. Let the, Lord, the Bible mentions about the, uh, yes. the spirit of truth will lead you and guide you into all truth. And that's what the false church a uh, uh, hypocrite, they don't understand. The Holy Ghost will lead you. Amen. It'll guide you. You know, the only thing you got to do is just let God have his way in your life. Amen. And you'll be blessed. Amen. So pray my strength for you. Thank you for the most and for the most of the call, Benjamin. Amen. Thank God for the blessed, powerful, uh, again to this panel on tonight. It's truly blessed. Thank God for the blessed. Uh, praise service, amen. The band was on fire and everybody cut some steps here and it was a good time all night, amen. Yeah. Give it all honor to Jesus who's head of my life, all yeah. honor, double yeah. honor. This show, Prophet Cross, is dedicated, faithful for all to Jesus, honor, peace, prayer, and righteousness, and mother of the legs, such example of a holy and unto honor is due, amen. Yeah. I thank God for this panel. I thank God for the scriptures the Prophet had brought out for him to bring out because I think you meditate. Like I said, Jonathan, if you put yourself coming to church and then you're baptized and you want to be saved, then all of a sudden you say, well, my family, I miss my family, I miss my kids, I miss him, I miss her. But what about Jesus? Suffer with Jesus, you reign with Jesus, amen. So when you go down to Jesus' name, you got to be for real. And the family, let them come in. You know, the thing is, it's really important because he was rejected. Your family is rejected if they don't come to Jesus. Amen. Lord. He rejected by God. And you want to hang out with somebody that don't want to be bothered with God? Lord. Oh, no. You gonna Your blessing is going to be rejected. Amen. But I'm a, I thank God for the panel. Amen. It's a truly blessing. And you've just deeply uh, read the scriptures as Prophet had given us. And it's a blessing to uh, be delivered from the world. Amen. So I thank God for deliverance. Thank God for God purging us every day, amen. each moment. Amen. And don't think about, like, don't think about the world. Don't think about him or she and him and that. And, you know, you're delivered from drugs. You're delivered from fornication. Delivered from all these diseases that's going on. And all this uh, meth and all the drugs I can't even think of. You know, they got so much stuff they put in pipes and who knows. But I'm going to close with uh, 1 John and 2 and 15. 
Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And I'm going to drop down to 19. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they may, might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Glory. So they were here. God manifest. They went away. Right. They're not with us. Jonathan wasn't with, his heart wasn't with God. Amen. But David was. He stood in the woods with the humbleness. You got to be humble in this walk. I believe someone said that you got to be humble. You can't have your cake and eat it. And once you escape it, you must, uh, God shows miracles. You know, he showed miracles every day. We're here. And, and, and you know, see how the accidents, I know we're on a church Wednesday. And it was like Drayton Road. About yeah. 10 or 15 fire uh, men. I said, fire trucks. I said, what is going on? Mm. Uh, everybody from every little area was there. Mm. But thank God, our building, everything is here. You know, thank the Lord. Yeah. The, the, little, the blessings we overlook daily. My father said, the red light, the green light. Somebody, kid, a little boy, 11 years old, going to school. Four dogs attacked him. And they, they keep showing on the news that um, two, they put, put away. The two are still running around, but he can't even walk. Let me, trying to get go to school, and they just right. ate him up pretty bad. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood covering him. And I said, I was in Anderson, so fast. And I thank God for the panel. Thank God for our prophet. Amen. Teach us. Amen. Thank God uh, for more miracles. Amen. Thank God you're here. And don't look back. You're here for a reason. And like that testimony that Evangelist Rogers had, they're trying to put her out. And look, that person got out. <laughs> right. God will do it. Amen. Amen. You know how I many times you went to court? Yeah. And the senior other works went to court. Ooh, and they try to say, you ain't getting this. Yeah. And God say, let me show you. I'm going to give you this. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, yeah. You suffer with God. You know, don't rain with them. Amen. Pray my strength to the Lord. Amen. 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 And I want to go to the subtext, 1 Samuel 23. 16 through 18, and Jonathan, Saul's son, arose and went to David into the woods and strengthened his hand in God. And he said unto him, Fear not, for the hand of Saul, my father, shall not find thee, and thou shalt be king over Israel, and I shall be next unto thee, and that also Saul, my father, knoweth. And they two made a covenant before the Lord, abode in the wood, and Jonathan went into his house. Um, Jonathan wanted to go back where it's comfortable when he knew that it was right to stay with David, but he didn't want to go through the struggle of suffering. And I would like to go to Romans 12 and 2, and it reads, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Jonathan didn't want to renew his mind. Um, he wanted to serve both God and the devil, which you can't do that because it will lead to, to destruction, which happened to Jonathan, sadly. And just follow God and not follow the devil. And for words and dismiss, I'd like to call Vince Samaya. Amen. For sending us the true only prophet, which I could double. Yeah. Thank God for his leadership and his strong faith and, and his testimony. Hallelujah. Thank God for everybody here and what you're doing for Akeem my God. We had a wonderful panel. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. And I just want to um, thank the panel for bringing out the word of God and um, about um, how Jonathan made the wrong mistake. He went back to his father's house and he knew his father was the devil. Yeah. And, um, and you know, it's just people, you just have to make the right decision, yeah. you know, when it's concerning yeah. your soul salvation, yeah. when it's concerning Jesus yeah. and, and in the faith. And just like in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 15, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. You know, you have to be in true light people. Amen. You know, you don't want to be a part of the church and you want to be ashamed because we run our bills and the vow of Nazarite, you know. Yes. But this is what? Then to enjoy the pleasure of sin for a season. And you see, Jonathan, he lost his life.
because he made the wrong decision. So he gone, boom, just like that. Glory. He gone. Yes. Yes. Glory. But Moses, he made the right decision. Yes. You know, and he, you know, became a blessing to the faith, you know, so, you know, so we blessed him too. Like we're not really worried about the world. You know, we worried about the babies out there that they, this world is killing. Yes. You know, with this abortion stuff over some foolishness. Glory. The Bible said choose life, not death. Amen. Right. Amen. If you don't want to have no baby, keep your legs closed. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on. You know, this all made some sense about what these, you know, I'm studying about, um, about the babies, you know, the womb, what they do in the womb. They yeah. alive and well. Yes. They burp. They eat fluid water. Yes. They swim. They jump. Hallelujah. They alive. Yes. So you killing a baby, that's on you. Hallelujah. And you going down for it. Amen. 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 That's what I got to say about that. Hallelujah. Now we all right. We be dismissed. Amen. 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 May the Lord watch. May the Lord watch. Amen. 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 Amen.